Hello, good morning, and welcome to our webinar in partnership with the Small Business Administration. Our office is always really pleased and excited to host these types of webinars to provide you with important resources on topics that are top of mind. We have received direct feedback from many of you who are tuning in today who may have an established business or are looking to start up your very first small business. In recognition of March being Women's History Month, we are joined by an incredible panel of women who are experts in finding funding opportunities for your small businesses, assistance with how to compete for federal contracts, and federal procurement certifications for women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses. We hope that this information is beneficial to you, and please let us know if there are any additional items that you wish to learn about. My name is Juliana Heck, and I serve as a constituent advocate for Congressman Kim, focusing on matters related to small businesses. Also joining us today is my colleague, Lynette Whiteman, who is Congressman Kim's Grants Director and Senior Advisor. This webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to all of you after the presentation. We will also have plenty of time for Q&A at the end with our group of presenters. So please put your questions in the chat box, chat box as we go and we'll get to as many questions as we can. Now, I am very happy to introduce our first presenter today who is Claudia Yarbrough. Claudia serves as a Lender Relations Specialist and District International Trade Specialist for the New Jersey SBA District Office located in Newark. Claudia, thank you so much for joining today, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Juliana, and good morning, everyone. Welcome. As stated, I am Claudia Yarborough, Lender Relations Specialist at the U.S. Small Business Administration New Jersey District Office. Today, I will discuss financing options for small business owners and entrepreneurs. Next slide. Working with the SBA, Small business owners and entrepreneurs are empowered to succeed with access to capital, valuable resources, business knowledge, and the right expertise for each stage of the business cycle. Wow, where, where are you in the business cycle? What are you looking to achieve? Read the slide. As noted on this slide, SBA assists businesses to start, grow, expand and recover. Before we discuss financing options, please note that SBA has reopened the Paycheck Protection Program portal. If you have not applied for forgiveness, now is your time to apply. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program is not forgivable. If you are a victim of fraud, please note there is a process to to report the loan or loans as fraud. If the PPP or EID loan was charged off and referred to Treasury, you are not eligible for addi additional funding via any regular or disaster loan program. Please note you can email the host for information regarding the various scenarios I will email links to Juliana to help you if you are a victim of the above. Next slide. At the SBA, when you, are, when you need a reliable advice to start or grow your business, the SBA can connect you with experts who understand the business climate at both a national as well as in your specific region or market. Our partners known as SCORE, the SBDC, WBC, and the Veteran Business Outreach Center, the resource partners can assist you with your business loan issues, such as restructuring terms, business plans, et cetera. Next slide. When accessing capital, the local district office lender relations specialist can assist you by explaining basic terms, lending limits, 
steering you to the lending program based on the needs of your business. Next slide. Please note SBA is not a direct lender, only in cases of natural disaster. When the president of the US declared a disaster in a specific area, the SBA dis disaster office opens the portal for intake of disaster loan applications. You can review the disaster website for any presidential declared disaster. The disaster office and the local district office are separate. The, di the district office is not a loan processing office. No matter how long you have been in business or the industry, guess what? There is a lending product for you. We have an actual loan for you. Our primary SBA back loan is the 7A, which you can borrow up to $5 million. And the 7A has multiple, can be used for multiple business related purposes. There is another lending product known as the SBA Express. The lending limit of the SBA Express is half a million dollars and can be used for a line of credit. The average loan size of 10 to $12,000 is mainly one of our micro loan products. And guess what? If you are a barbershop, a beauty salon, a nail salon, a startup, you are eligible for an SBA loan. And we have another lending product, which is, which is the Community Advantage, which one can borrow up to $350,000 and you can utilize it for many purposes. Are you interested in owner-occupied commercial property, heavy machinery, building in an opportunity zone? Guess what? The SBA 504 loan is a product. The lending limit can expand to five and a half million dollars, especially when you are operating in a opportunity zone. And these loans, the 504, the micro loan and the community advantage are with our community development financial institutions. The listing of all lending products are on the SBA New Jersey website which is www.sba.gov forward slash NJ. Next slide. SBA lending products are designed with you in mind and the un unique, unique needs of your business. In case of counseling, we have resource partners as stated earlier that can actually help you to launch, grow, or repair your business, even if you are a startup or you are someone that need, you know, additional capital, you're trying to remodel or you want to market, SBA can provide a loan for you. Next slide. Increase your chances of securing a loan. The SBA can further help you with our lending program with experienced lenders. Our lenders are experienced and they actually listen to you. They're willing to listen to your story, especially if you file for bankruptcy pr protection and the bankruptcy was discharged. Your lender wants to hear your story. You can apply for a business loan. Please note, Disclose any past defaults. If you defaulted on the PPP, the EIDL, please disclose. And any other instances of non-payment early in the lending process. Next slide. As stated earlier, we have our regular 7A loan product. We have our 504, the SBA Express, 
the microloan and community advantage. And you may know a lender, and then there are times when you don't know a lender. There is lender match. Lender match can increase your chances of securing a loan. And prior to applying for lender match, which is on the New Jersey website, you need to describe your needs and describing your needs or on your business plan. So you would describe your needs. And if a lender is interested, you may receive a reply only if the lender is, is interested. If the lender is not interested, they may refer you to a resource partner because sometimes you're not ready for capital. So tell them sometime you need to take a break, regroup, gain the necessary experience, build up my credit report, and then a lender may talk to you, send you a loan application, and you can apply for a business loan. Next slide. Are you interested in international trade or exporting? Exporting is a program for experienced business owners that currently export. An export loan products finance the export side of your business. International trade, export working capital, export express. Those are the lending products from half a million dollars to $5 million. And a resource partner can assist you with building your business plan. So if you are competing with foreign markets, you need a letter of credit, you want to purchase goods and services to support your export sales, there is an export loan waiting for you. Next slide. I wanna thank you for your time. I'm Claudia Yarborough. My email address is on the screen and I'm open to any questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia, for all that information. I am now happy to introduce our next speaker, who is Janet Peralta, who serves as the Business Opportunity Specialist for the New Jersey SBA District Office. Janet, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Thank you, Juliana. Can everybody see it? My name is Janet Peralta. I'm a business opportunity specialist at the Small Business um, Administration in Newark, New Jersey. And um, my specialty is federal contracting. Um, this presentation is to provide basic information to small business owners of all the opportunities available to uh, all businesses from the federal government. Some of the small businesses, they're not aware that they can sell the products and services to the federal government. Are you a small? A lot of the small business owners, they don't realize that they are small enough to compete and participate in the federal market. You need to be a small owner based on the SBA size standards. You have to be um, any uh, type of business side, sole, uh, sole owner, partnership, corporation, or any legal form. You have to be located in the United States. In order for you to uh, participate as a um, federal contractor, you have to take the first step, obtaining a unique entity ID number registered in the system for award management. This portal is for all businesses seeking to do business or selling the products and services to the federal government. Registered in SAM, obtain you a unique entity ID number and start um, seeking for federal contracts. The federal government spent over $600 billion in procurement. Certain percentage of this procurement are set aside to award contracts to uh, four certifications under the SBA program. 
Women-owned small businesses, 5%. Small disadvantaged businesses, including the 8A program, 11%. They have some business, 3%. Service disabled veteran-owned small businesses, 3%. <clears throat> the women-owned small businesses, the eligibility to participate in this program is you have to be a small businesses according to the SBA size standards, be at least 51% owned and controlled by women who are a US citizens. Have a women manage day-to-day -day operations who are also making long-term decision. The economic disadvantage women on small business is a south division of the women on small businesses. And in other words, is an additional certification giving a lot of amplitude to small businesses to apply in this, in, this, in this category. In order for you to qualify as economic disadvantaged women on a small business, you have to meet all the requirements I have mentioned above. Be owned and controlled by one or more women, each with a personal network less than 850, with, a, with an average adjusted income of $400,000 or less, and have a total of personal assets less than $6.5 million. The government um, award contracts uh, for a specific industries that where women are underrepresented. Under the WOSB or Women Owned Small Businesses, there are 626 service codes or next code, how we know, are assigned for limited competition among this group. For the economic disadvantage women on a small business program, there are 107 service or next code are eligible for competition among the SBA certified economic disadvantage women on a small businesses. How a contracting officer set aside a contract for one of these programs, the, the contracting officer has to receive at least two responses from qualified uh, firms in order to set aside either to the women on a small business or economic disadvantage women on a small business. And the award will be at the fair market price. The certification before firms can compete for a WSB set aside contracts, they must apply for certification in the SBA portal, WSB that certified ISBA.gov. SBA allows continued participation from business that utilize the third party certifiers to obtain the WSB or EDWSB certification uh, via the SBA. You have to do it through online and the portal for the WSB certified SBA.gov. Please be advised that SBA approved third party certification does not automatically activate a firm WSB eligibility. If a firm chooses to go through a third party to be approved, they have to submit the certificate from this third party along with evidence of US, US citizenship. SBA approved third party certification is El Paso, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, National Women Business Donor Corporation, US Women's Chamber of Commerce, and Women Business Enterprise National Council. Maintaining a WSB certification, participants are required to annually attest to meeting program requirement, updated USAM profile. Additional the participants, they undergo a program review every three years and is conducted by LBA or a third party in order for you to maintain the certification. <clears throat> in order to maintain the status, is recommended to everyone who has a certification under the SBA programs to update the status in SAM. Why? If you uh, neglect to update your status, your status will, will be reading inactive. And this is one of the reasons why contracting officers, when they are seeking for potential vendors, if they see a, the status inactive, simply they just disregard and they go with another active um, participant on any of these certifications. The 8A Business Developing Program. The 8A is the only program that provides managerial, technical, and contractual assistance to a small business owner. It's a nine-year program. And to be eligible to receive contracts under the set-aside, the small businesses has to be small 
by the, by the SBA size standards that have previously participated in the 8A program be at least 51% owned and controlled by US citizens who are socially and economically disadvantaged, have a personal network of less than 850,000, an adjusted gross income of 400,000 or less, and assets totally $6.5 million or less. Demonstrate that you have a good character and potential for success as having big in business for two years. The federal government defines qualified for the 8A program, including the accounts as being socially and economic disadvantaged. There is a long list of requirements that we cannot provide it to you in this short time. The list of the requirements to participate in the 8A program are listed in the Title 13, Part 124 of the Code for the Federal Regulation. Some firms might be eligible for the 8A program, but they are not ready to contract with the federal government. Businesses interested in applying for the 8A certification can get a preliminary assessment of whether the 8A is right for them. You need to visit our portal and the SBA certified website, which is the main portal where you're gonna find instructions, checklists, and how to obtain your certification under the 8A program. The Hubson certification. The Hubson certification helps small businesses in urban, rural communities gain potential access. This is uh, uh, this program allows to uh, several locations to gain um, uh, opportunities in the federal market uh, for the small businesses located in these areas. Uh, the requirements are to be small again by the reference. Uh, the SBA size standards, be at least 51% owned by US citizens, Indian tribal government, an Alaska Native Corporation, a Native Hawaiian organization, a community development corporation, or an agricultural cooperative. Have its principal office, the single location at which the greatest number of its employees perform most of their work, located in a half zone area, and have at least 35% of its employees residing in this location. Now, a lot of people will say, am I in a half zone area? There's only one way that you can, you can identify if you business or you reside as an employee in the half zone area. We have a, a map that distinguish and locate a specific locations that they are assigned as a half zone uh, locations. Uh, Visiting our portal, you're gonna find all the information regarding uh, the have some map and request information about if you are located in a have some area, whether, whether you are an employee or you have your business uh, applying to be in a have some um, certified program. This recertification and the program examination for the have some program, all first might be recertified annually that they remain in compliance with the program requirements as of the anniversary day of the certification. Failure to recertify within the required time frame results and proposed for the certification. The program examination is conducted again every three years. Again, this is a recommendation for all small businesses, whether it is a women-owned, 8A, have some or service disabled, to update their profile in the system for award management, also known as SAM. The service disabled veterans own small businesses. Provides procurement agency with the authority to set a specific uh, uh, contracts set aside to service disabled uh, veterans own small businesses. The certification eligibility, again, is 51% veteran ownership, have the highest officer position, you have to have the managerial expertise, manage daily operation, you have to register as a small business with some, again, you have to be a small size based on the SBA size, size standards. And you have to be declared um, veteran by the Veterans Administration. All the information uh, regarding all these certifications you can find in our portal. As well, I have provided to Julianne several fact sheets that covers all the information that is provided to you um, during this presentation. We have several resources to help you to identify if you are suitable to participate in any of these certifications. SBA have resource partners that you can 
<clears throat> locate for um, assistance in, with federal contracting. The procurement center representative. We have a small business district office all over the United States. The women business centers, APEX accelerators procurement technical assistance centers, the small business developing centers, a SCORE. In addition, I have provided to Julianne a, a federal resources is a unique um, list of all the useful links that small businesses need in order to find um, counseling, training, contracting opportunities, subcontracting opportunities, a forecast to the federal government, um, a schedule uh, planification with the GSA, how to form a joint venture, how to find a mentor. All those links are, it will be able, the small businesses, to uh, easy their process to get it into the federal market and learn and educate your, their, themselves with everything that involves doing business with the federal government under any of the certifications that I have provided to you. These federal contracting links are included in the federal resource uh, fact sheet that I have uh, provided to Julianne, but you can find them as well in our portal. SBA is full of information that it can help you to start your business with the federal government, expand and be successful. Remember the success of your business and the federal market is 100% on you and your marketing strategy to compound and create a, a strong network of agencies that they can work with you. Thank you for your time. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, this is only a basic information to let you know that small businesses can participate selling your services or products to the federal government. The federal government buys from paper clips, catering service, janitorial services, um, snow removal, you name it. You have to find which agency is purchasing your services, when they purchase, how much they purchase, and who's your competition. All those links that I have provided to you, it can offer you that information that is very critical for you to be successful in the federal market. I'm opening with uh, questions at the end of this uh, meeting. Um, again, my name is Janet Peralta. If you need uh, further assistance, you need to uh, schedule a counseling services one-on-one, -on -one, so I can explain to you, besides I can provide you technical assistance, meaning I can show you where to find these opportunities, where, you, where to find a point of contact. How can you develop a network? Schedule a, site, um, schedule a meeting with me. My office um, phone number and my email address is included for your convenience. Thank you so much again. And I hope that you take the first step uh, registering in the system for our management and reading all the literature that is available to you to notify, um, to identify that you are suitable to do business with the federal government. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Janet, for all that information and all those helpful resources. Um, our last presenter is Jamelia Powell, who serves as the program manager for LAEDA. LAEDA is the Women's Business Center founded by the Latin American Economic Development Association which is located in Camden, New Jersey. Jamelia, I'll turn over the last portion of her presentation over to you. Thank you, Juliana. Good morning, everyone. I, it is a pleasure to be here. So thank you, Juliana and Lynette for the opportunity as well as Claudia and Janet. Um, so again, my name is Jamelia Powell. I oversee the LIDA Women's Business Center. So as many of the ladies on the call mentioned today, um, as far as the SBA resource partner, the Women's Business Center is one of the SBA resource partners. So I think this is just a well-rounded way um, to finish the conversation. So I'm going to share my presentation. All right, so once again, I am a part of the LIDA Women's Business Center. So our Women's Business Center was founded in 2016. Um, our Women's Business Center was really a natural response to what we were seeing here within the city of Camden. So they, we had a lot of women business owners who were trying to start a business and were facing unique challenges um, to starting a business. 
The reason why the Women's Business Center exists is we often find that many women um, are mothers, are caregivers, are spouses, and they not always have the time to start the business or they all, don't always have access to the resources um, to really get their business off the ground and sustainable. So the resource partners, including the Women's Business Center, solely exist to ensure that we are a bridge um, to many of the services that you heard today from the SBA. So through uh, the assistance of the Small Business Administration, um, we promote and provide assistance to women's business owners, whether they are in the startup phase or in or existing um, in business. So we try to really provide not only business training as well as business counseling and technical assistance. So who we are, what we do, we empower women to realize their potential. Um, we really try to find a well-rounded group of programs and services to ensure that women's needs are met here in the community. So with our Women's Business Center, many people will say, do you only service women? Our primary focus is women, but we also have a business service center who will service um, other people as well. Um, we are the only women's business center in Southern New Jersey. So we cover so Southern New Jersey and we have a sister women's business center that covers Central and Northern New Jersey. So our goal is he we are here to support women entrepreneurs in their journey to business success. We do this through not only training, but as well as business counseling. So you'll see some information about what we do. We provide not only seminars and networking events for people to be able to gain knowledge um, and experience uh, in their particular area. We provide trainings that go anywhere from a single night seminar to a nine-week program. I'll talk a little bit more about those. Uh, we have an online learning academy because if people cannot get to our office or can't, meet with us during normal business hours. We offer assistance with our online programming. We provide one-on-one -on -one business coaching and we do have bilingual um, services. I, I also like to say we provide multilingual services because we are a very multicultural um, organization here at LIADA. Um, so we have various business counselors uh, that meet the needs of our clients. So just a simple programs overview. Um, we have a continuum of business education. The goal is really to meet entrepreneurs where they are. So what we find is that many entrepreneurs um, will hear about many of these services. So they're here, they'll hear about the 7A programs. They'll hear about the federal contracting and not really sure of how to start um, or you know where to go to get more information on these resources. And sometimes it can be extremely overwhelming. So we are here to ensure that we can break down that process for you and help you find the right place to begin for the business where you are, you know, so depending on where you are. So you may be a startup and you say, hey, I'm interested in federal contracting, but that may not necessarily be the place for you in this particular moment. So there are other things that are available that you can use as a starting point to in really work your way up um, if federal contracting is the place where you want to be. Um, so our goal is really to create long-term relationships with our clients. Um, we really and truly like to believe our organization is relational and not transactional. So the goal is really to see where you are in the current moment, um, help you establish your business goals, and, and create a really good action plan of short-term and long-term goals to get you moving forward. Um, I think what I find is many people come to me with a long-term vision for their business, and they really haven't put together the actionable steps to keep them moving forward step-by-step, uh, because step, it really is a, a journey. Um, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So uh, many of you who are probably on the call will know it, it takes a long time to really get the business to where you want it to be. So just a little bit about some of our trainings. Um, we do try to provide trainings depending on where you are in the process to business ownership. Um, so we have a turning your hobby into a business. So if you are a hobbyist making a product, um, our goal is really to help you establish that product. So some people will really take their money, jump head first into a business and not really, and they have beautiful skill. 
um, they have all the technical skill in the world. Our goal is really just to match that with the business acumen. Um, so we're giving you best practices of how to sustain your business and operationalize the business that you're seeking to go into. So the turning your hobby into a business, our goal is really to take a product that you may have been making um, for years and selling to family and friends and take that product and really um, get it out into the market, um, really show proof of concept um, by selling it, whether it's public markets, selling online, things of that nature. Our Jumpstart series is a five-week program. Um, it really talks about business planning. Um, the ABCs of starting a small business. And we also target um, some things that women face um, in ownership. So negotiation, work-life balance, and time task management. Um, we always are a strong proponent of um, financial literacy because what we realize is that many business owners will take all their money first. And we know we understand that, yes, you do. And to tell every business owner on the call, you do have to take some of your money and invest in your business but many people will come to all of our offices at a time when they're in crisis and now they need the money. Um, so I always say you wanna try to borrow before you are in crisis um, when you look better to the lender. Um, so that's the place that you really wanna begin. So we help you in that process. Um, we have a nine week program that um, goes over all of the different things that we think are important to starting a business um, from business planning, uh, marketing, accounting, business law, personnel. We are helping you write a business plan. So many people go to the lender and they try to figure out why I'm getting the no. And quite often um, you have to write a business plan that's realistic um, for what you are currently doing um, and you know, show a plan of growth um, with your financial projections. For people who uh, cannot utilize our services um, during the nine to five hour, we also have a program called Dream Builder. It's um, a self-paced course that helps you create a business plan um, for your business. Um, I always say you get out of it what you put in. So you have to be well-researched or at least have a very good grasp of the industry that you wanna go into to ensure that you can write a business plan that will look good to a lender, but also be good for operational purposes. They also have another segment called Financing Your Dream where it puts together an action plan on how you can begin to fund your business. Now, we always will say business training is the first portion of the process. You now have to take all of that information and put it into action. So alongside of business training, we offer business counseling. So the business counseling just begins with a beautiful process. The process will never change. Um, we have conversation with you as far as your business goals. We establish SMART goals. And we probably heard this um, so many times. If you go to enough trainings, you hear about SMART goals. Uh, they have to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So you can't have a goal that you say, hey, this is what I want to do and not have it be practical and be achievable within a specific period of time. And we really just use the workshop sessions to help you achieve those goals, both short and long-term. Um, what we try to do is really put you in a position to keep moving forward, um, whether it's from business idea, whether you're 20 years in business and you've reached a plateau and you wanna try to grow, um, that is the goal of our organization. Then we offer um, what we call business capital solutions. And we really try to ensure that we match people with the right type of lending. So you heard um, Claudia talk about the SBA lending match. Um, we really just try to use our relationships to help you find the best place. Um, we have some things that we have put in place with through um, LIDA. So we have where you can actually start that process of, hey, I don't necessarily, I can't access um, $20,000 in this moment because my credit is hurt. We actually have a program that exists to help you start rebuilding your credit and giving you a tiny amount of uh, capital to start working on not only your credit, but also fund some portion of your business that can help you continue to grow. So our purpose is really just to ensure that wherever you are in the process, we can help you continue to move forward. And we know that lending and, and funding is very important to help you grow and continue to move forward. So we really try to find the right um, avenue for you. And sometimes we really ensure we find a very creative way to ensure that that happens. 
So our goal is really to take you from interest in a business concept to open for business. So we do that through a lot of technical assistance, um, whether it's our seminars, whether that's connecting you to the incentive programs, helping you with the loan packaging. So during the pandemic, um, we were helping people do PPP and idle loan loan applications um, because people were not sure of how to um, go through the process. We were helping them by connecting them to the SBA um, lending specialist who could assist them. Um, we help you write a business plan if you're looking for funding as a startup business, if you're looking to expand your business, if you're looking for a location and you're trying to figure out where to go, um, we help you in that process. It's just really a navigation. Um, we, we try to serve as your partner. Um, so your partner who the only stake we have in the business is to see you move forward. Um, we don't want any stake in that outside of seeing uh, your idea come to fruition. Um, so our goal is really to do that. So I just wanted to share some upcoming events. These are some of the single night programs. Um, we start with intro to entrepreneurship when people are in the idea phase um, in collaboration with the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Southern New Jersey chapter. We do an event every year from the kitchen to the boardroom. As you can see, we have credit management that's being offered in Spanish. So learning about your FICO score, what your credit is made up, you know, what makes your credit up and how you can start using actionable steps to fix your credit. Um, and then these are some of our um, more, there are some of our more intense programs. So we have an eight week um, food trucking program that's beginning actually later today. I'll be teaching, um, turning your hobby into a business is a six week program. Um, it's the maker who is trying to get their business going and our Women's Business Academy, which I mentioned um, 75 more and more hours of training that actually will begin um, January of 2025. Um, so that is everything that I have. Um, I'm open to questions. Um, one thing that I do want to mention um, that was talked about earlier on the call, you can start with state certifications. You can start with other types of things to keep, get a, a ramp up um, for your business. So the federal is probably one of the hardest requirements. Um, to move forward when you're trying to do contracting, but you, there are also state certifications. There are also other ways to get your products seen by larger companies and, and entities. Um, so it really is learning more about the resources that are there and available. Thanks so much. Um, thank you to all our panelists. That was incredible information. And, and again, this is, um, you know, our office does these webinars. I know there's a lot of information that was distributed and it's a way to open the door to you. So it's a way for you to sort of know what questions to ask, who to follow up with. So we really thank you for your expertise. Uh, for those who might have joined late, uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be emailed to everybody. And the uh, panelists have also graciously given us supplemental information and links. So we'll get that all out to you as well in case you missed anything. So I'm gonna start off the question and the answer then I'll turn it over to Juliana. Um, before I do, I just wanna, I wanna piggyback on uh, what Janet talked about a little bit with uh, sam.gov. That is not an easy, easy uh, process to navigate and really recommend that you do that as soon as possible. If you're thinking of going into this area, jump on sam.gov, start that application process. It can take time. There's a lot of material generally they ask. Since this is a federally run program, sam.gov, our office can help if you run into any problems. So we've had people reach out to us who have tried to register on sam.gov and are just in some sort of crazy loop where they're not moving forward and we're able to reach out to our liaisons. But I do recommend if you are going the government contract route, definitely jump on to sam.gov and get that started because that can cannot be always a 100% easy process. One of the questions that we got in beforehand that I wanted to start off with is, and I'm gonna open this up to anybody could jump in, I won't direct it, but why is it better to borrow from the SBA rather than going directly to your, your own bank or a bank that you're familiar with? What, what is the advantages of going through the SBA? Somebody wants to take that. The SBA, 
offers terms so that the borrower can easily repay the loan. Some of the banks for, let's say, <clears throat> a line of credit, the bank may offer a term of seven years. The SBA offers a term of 10 years. And SBA offers, especially for the micro loan, they offer technical assistance. As um, Jamila stated, sometimes um, a client may need technical assistance. And if you're meeting the client where they are, they will need that extra help to start or grow their business. That's why SBA is a very good resource for anyone that's in business. SBA can help you from day one to day 100. If you've been in business for 20 years, you can knock on the door of SBA for assistance with one of our resource partners. That sort of leads to the second question about the lending process when somebody is really starting up or in their growing phase or not really an established business? Is there advice for somebody right in that startup phase? In a startup phase, I would reach out to a resource partner. We have the Small Business Development Center. We have the Women Business Center right here in Camden, and there's one in Chatham, New Jersey. They hold your hand. They guide you. They guide you when and you start I was gonna business add and you need that special help. Absolutely. And, and what I was going to say is in many cases, what you're going to find when you go to a lender, when that lender gives you a no, they don't always tell you why. Uh, but what I'm mm -hmm. finding is that in many cases, um, you have to look, they're going to say, okay, if you have never borrowed for your business before, you don't have a history of borrowing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I can look at look at is from a personal standpoint, and we don't know where that stands. So, okay, we can say you can get a personal loan, but how is your business going to fare? Because any lender, regardless of what the loan is going to be for, is going to want to know you can pay them back. And if you're saying, hey, my business is going to, if you are not sure if your business is going to consistently need um, funding and lending, um, you, you're you just not going to know. Um, you have to really be able to put together a business plan. So I've had many lenders send someone directly to me and say, hey, they didn't even come with a business plan. Um, they didn't know how much they needed. Um, so you really have to be very clear on what you want, how much you need, how you're going to utilize that, and how you can actually repay it. So they want to be able to see that your, your income and revenue that you generate from the business after expenses um, is going to be able to pay that loan back. So, so that's the biggest thing. A, a business plan is going to be extremely helpful. And, and as Claudia mentioned, the, the resource partners are going to help you in that process. Perfect. Okay, next question is, can you apply for an 8A certification if you have no past performance history yet? Uh, yes, but my recommendation is that um, if you don't have no experience <clears throat> in the federal market, period, it's going to take a time for you to learn the ropes of federal contracting. The moment that you are approved into the 8A program, the clock starts ticking. If you have not learned everything about federal contracting, but let's say by the sixth year, you're not going to be able to obtain contracts. So my recommendation to all small businesses before jumping into the pool, okay, you have to work as a subcontractor, seek opportunities as a subcontractor with, uh, with primes, um, submit, submit proposals as a small businesses. You need to develop uh, a network. You need to learn the skills of doing business with the federal government before applying to the 8A program. You can do it, but it's gonna be a challenge. Good advice. And this is sort of a personal question for somebody, but are there any career opportunities at the centers um, in your group or how can somebody uh, consider applying for to work for the Small Business Association? Um, I put in the chat, at the current time our, in our office, there isn't any openings, but I put in the chat the USA.gov um, 
website, they can go there and mm -hmm. navigate and find something based on their experience. Great. And, and that's for the entire world. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Juliana, I'll turn it over to you for the perfect. Um, so the first question in the chat says, how do you register as a woman owned business? Right. Um, as a woman in yeah. uh, the same thing, you have to go into some, you have to complete the entire uh, questionnaire. Be, within and some, there are supplemental pages, okay? That supplemental pages leads to the SBA portal, the dynamic small business search. You complete the information that is required. When you finish, you go into the beta that certified that SBA.gov, which is the WSB portal. You need to revise and find information in our website. It leads you to the exact portal where you can submit your application and all the documentation that is required for you to be certified by SBA. But first things first, you have to register in SAM and the supplemental pages. Awesome, thank you. I know there was a question um, that asked about women's centers in other parts of New Jersey. As Jamilia, you mentioned that um, your center is the only one located in South Jersey. I know we have Nicole Russell from the WCUC um, tuning in today. Um, it's located in Chatham, but if there's any mm -hmm. other women-focused business centers um, in the state, can you share that information with us? So within the state of New Jersey, Chatham, so hi, Nicole. Uh, so Chatham, uh, and they exist throughout um, the United States. Um, so mm -hmm. we are all just as many of the other uh, SBA resource partners, we are in um, just about every single state of the United States. Um, so if you are on the call and you, you cannot find um, someone that's close to you, you can actually use the SBA's website um, and it has a section that talks about resource partners and all of the ones that were mentioned today, whether it's the Small Business Development Center, the Women's Business Development Centers, uh, SCORE, VBOX, um, so Veteran um, Business Owned Centers. So they, they are all resources um, who the SBA has, you know, put instilled that confidence and resources in to help you in this process. Mm -hmm. I, I know someone, uh, if I could just do it, somebody mentioned about um, disabled veterans business, you know, assistance. Is there is there business assistance if a, if just for veteran if they're not disabled or it's only for disabled veterans? There is, there is. Oh. Actually, it's a vet cert. When you visit that our, our webpage and the uh, federal contracting, it will list all the certifications. And one of the pro, one of the program is the veterans program. The moment that you click that page, it will provide you all the information about about how you register yourself as a veteran as well as applying for the service disabled veterans zone. And it provides counseling and support uh, phone numbers and links where you can find the veteran and the service disabled can find uh, counseling and assistance in regards of federal contracting. But I want to add something in regards of the uh, women owned that someone um, put that, um, that question. If the small businesses don't feel like uh, they are able to register themselves as a women know they can they can approach one of the four uh, third party uh, certifiers to for assistance how to register in SAM and applying for the uh, WSB certification. Thank you so much for that. Um, so the next question says I have multiple SBA certifications, economically disadvantaged women owned small business and a service disabled veteran small business in addition to some others. Can I utilize my certifications to work with the prime to obtain federal contracts or does the prime have to hold the certifications? Quote, for instance, a contract with a set aside for an SDVOSB, can my certification be used to help the prime get the contract? Yes, definitely you can, you can partner. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna give an example. Let's say that I have four certifications. I'm a service disabled, 8A, women owned and have four. Okay, um, I have not obtained the contract. So I need to partner with somebody. That, that is small business, so let's say it's a women owned. So we can go after contracts under the women owned because it's gonna be a prime. She's gonna be a prime. The prime has to 
and, and the partner with other small businesses, they can go after larger contracts that the prime has not obtained it yet. Okay, the partners gives the opportunity of, of educated, provided the skills and the network <laughs> to the prime to go after those specific contracts. They can use it, they can go after, they can find a mentor and, and uh, obtain the contracts. They can form um, a joint venture and they can simply just be a partners. Okay. okay, that's super helpful. Um, on this a similar topic, um, the next question says, I am 100% service, to, service disabled veteran. Can you refer me to someone to take the first step in a veteran owned business? Definitely. My recommendation is visit um, our webpage, um, www.sba.gov and the federal contracting. You're gonna find the, the link for veterans. The moment that you open, you will see the support and counseling service uh, 1-800 number and the office that um, <clears throat> assists all the veterans and service disabled with uh, contract opportunities. I know the veterans, they receive sole sort contracts from the veterans affairs. Most likely the veterans affairs, they assist so much to the veterans and service disabled obtain contracts with the, with the federal government. But I will be glad to provide uh, the links uh, and the steps to get that assistance that uh, the service disabled is looking for. And in addition to that, thank you so much to any veterans and service disabled attending to this uh, webinar. Great, yeah, if you can send those links to us, we can include those um, in the follow-up email to everyone with all the additional resources that you provided. Um, the next question says, is there a webinar or program for small businesses that are LGBTQ plus owned and resources for those people? So I can jump in on that. Um, so as Janet was mention mentioning that they have um, federal certifications, there are also state certifications. So there is um, there has recently been a, an established um, certification for LGBTQ plus um, community, but that is through the state. Um, so just like you have many of the federal certifications, you also have state certifications to work with state agencies. So you would have not only that certification, but small um, business enterprise, minority women business enterprise. Um, so service uh, veteran owned, service disabled. So much of the same thing that Janet was mentioning at a federal level, they also exist at a state level sure. and including the LGBTQ plus um, certification as well. Great, and if anyone else has questions about um, LGBTQ resources, we can um, connect you with um, Gus who runs the Pride Chamber of Commerce in New Jersey. So we're happy to you know, help facilitate that conversation as well. Um, so I know we're getting close to time. We do have a couple more questions. We'll probably get to one or two more. Um, and then if we don't have time to get to your question, feel free um, to email myself, Lynette or any of the panelists. And we're happy to follow up afterwards on those. Um, so the next question says, can SBA certification processes qualify for GSA contracts? Um, well, GSA is a different agency and GSA also has this program for the small businesses to um, apply for the GSA schedules. So from time to time, SBA um, uh, do discussions with GSA to um, create a uh, multi-award contracts that they can, um, 8 day participants, 8 day participants uh, can be in these um, type of um, multi-award contracts. So GSA is a different scenario. Uh, GSA is another avenue for the small businesses to market the services to the federal government, meaning it's another way they can market and uh, uh, they list the services in the GSA schedule. So when the service, of the agency is seeking for specific services, they can go directly to GSA to find that suitable business instead of putting a solicitation in sound. So it's another avenue of marketing the services to the federal government via or through GSA. Great, so we have one case specific question. Um, so this individual says they work for Chicago State as a sub vendor and have proposed their business as a direct vendor. They have an SBE and WMBE certification from New Jersey, and they wanna know if these certifications are applicable for other states. So 
So I would probably have to do some additional research in that area, but I would assume you would have to apply for a, for the state that you're going to be in um, because many of the certifications are for the state agencies of that state. So, but I can definitely um, do some additional research and, and send that information out. Fantastic. And one quick um, follow-up. Someone just wants to know what is GSA and if we could share the website for GSA. <laughs> GSA is General Service Administration. Uh, a GSA is, is a federal agency that assists uh, small businesses uh, listing um, the services and the GSA schedules in order for uh, federal agencies, make it easier for federal agencies to um, find uh, potential vendors uh, through the GSA schedules. Instead of them um, doing a Google or a, a research on, on the web, simply they go into GSA. GSA has already a, uh, a portfolio of small businesses um, in a different schedules. When I say schedules, I'm gonna just gonna give an example. For example, for information technology, the GSA schedule number is 70. So each service, each small business, they have to identify to what the schedule they have to identify with in order for them to apply. But for more information regarding this schedule, they need to visit the General Service Administration website. This is not SBA. This is another pathway to market the services to the federal government or to sell to the federal government through the GSA schedules. Thank you. I just want to mention uh, before Juliana wraps up, um, thank you to the panelists. Thank you to everybody who attended. If there is, like this again was the tip of the iceberg, I feel like, you know, with the questions that were coming in, if there's a particular topic that you'd like us to pursue or another webinar that you would like us to have, when we send out the information to you, please send Juliana and I your suggestions. Uh, we'd be happy to reach back out to the SBA or other experts in this field. So really um, open to your suggestions and really wanting to hear what your needs are in this field to support your efforts. So just wanted to mention that. So Juliana? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we just want to thank all of you for joining us today. And we hope that you found the presentations to be helpful as well as the Q&A. And we want to thank our amazing group of panelists for sharing all this amazing information with us today. Um, as mentioned before, the slides and recording of the webinar will be emailed to everyone who registered, as well as additional links and resources. And if you're interested in learning more about future webinars and other events that our office is hosting, feel free to subscribe to any of our newsletters at kim.house.gov. Um, some of these newsletters include a weekly newsletter and newsletters specifically for grants, small businesses, and veterans, which are all topics that we've you know, dove into deep today. And if there's anything else our office can do to support you, do not hesitate to reach out at any time. We're happy to help. Um, thank you again for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.